Newark, New Jersey. Dick Downey. From St. Louis, Missouri, the smiling Irishman, Big Pat Patterson. Welcome once again here to the beautiful Emerson Lanes in the industrial city of Parkersburg, West Virginia, in the heart of the Ohio Valley. It's Championship Bowling, television's number one bowling show with the world's greatest bowlers in match game competition every week. Over $75,000 in prizes. This is Fred Wolf. We have two great stars here this week in our field of 24 of these, the best in the nation, no doubt about it. $1,000 to the winner. $500 to the runner-up. All competition is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress. 300 games are worth $10,000. Now, on top of all that, a $250 bonus for five strikes in any one game, and, of course, $50 more for every strike on top of those five. It looks like a great match. Pat Patterson from St. Louis, young Dick Downey from Newark, New Jersey. We'll be ready for the first game of three in just a short minute. Dick Downey elected to start on the left side. All games starting on the left. Then competition moves from right to left. Richard Alexander Downey. A big bender, two high on the nose. Great way to get started. Sitting in with us this week, George Howard, the Detroit star. And George, how'd you like to pick up a strike like that along the route? Pretty, uh, what a way to start this match, huh? Well, we'll see if he can do anything with a lucky one. Here is the big fella from St. Louis, Pat Patterson. He's too high and almost kicks one out of there, leaving the seven pin. Claude Patrick Patterson. They call him the Smiling Irishman, and that he is. Born in St. Louis back in 1925. Pat was a pretty big fella before Dick Downey had a chance to see the light of day at the seven pin. And he covers the spare. And we'll move to the left. Patterson has quite an average on championship bowling. In 18 games over the years, he is averaging 220. And that includes single games of 287 and 289. In the Northbrook, Illinois series on championship bowling, Pat started two games in his four appearances with 10 strikes in a row. And that $10,000 was just a little too much. Solid 10, Mr. Patterson buried that one. Pat throws the three-finger ball, fingertip variety, as does his opponent, Dick Downey. The wide span. Pat, one of the boys that uh, takes his pinky, his little finger, and folds it in under the palm of his hand and lets the ball ride on the back of his little finger. At the 10 pin, he covers the spread. And here's Dick Downey, a youngster that I'm sure a lot of people will be watching because this is his first appearance on championship bowling. There's just a certain amount of extra pressure appearing on a show like this. The number one bowling show in television, Dick Downey on a strike and look at that seven pin. There's a bad break for the youngster. Of course, he had a lucky strike going, but he showed us something in being able to put the next one in there. George, how could that seven pin stand Boy, up? Freddy, the way those pins flew around, there's no way it could stand up. That's the way it goes. He paid the lucky when he stole, he paid it right back. No way for it to stand, but we're looking at it. That's there the game. Is. There's That's the cover. Good. So Downey, unable to get away. Patterson is 19 spare. The youngster, 20 on a spare as he moves to the left. 
Dick is married, his wife Rosemary carries about a 140 average. Dick didn't get started bowling until 1956. Bowled in his first league, first year, average 162. Look at that, another seven pin. Well, these pins are not easy to knock down, believe me. Uh, I say that in that they are brand new. Every week, we just take them out of the boxes, all AMF tournament grade pins, registered sets, matched weights. The lanes are reconditioned. We don't make it too easy for the boys. Real match game condition. There's the cover. And down he has the spare as Pat Patterson moves in on the right side. Pat left a solid 10 pin in the second frame. Pat, the daddy of four wonderful children. His wife, a great bowling fan. Here's the big turn. Doesn't get enough of the pocket. And Patterson got away pretty lucky with that one, getting nine pins. Pat's father averaged 190 many years ago. Got Pat started actually in 1938 when he was only 13 years of age. He covers the spare and moves left. On the 1963 PBA Tour, Professional Bowlers Tour, Pat was runner-up in the Dallas Open. He was a finalist in the National All-Star in Kansas City, finished seventh. He was a finalist in the World's Invitational in Chicago in 63 and finished 13th. Captain of the team that won the National Match Game BPAA Team Championship. So Patterson with his first strike. Downey moving in on the right. Be quite a feather in his cap if he can pull this one out and be the winner for the $1,000 at the end of three games. A little high, broke it up, nothing but the 10 pin. I can't help but notice uh, George, George Howard, sitting with us here this week, that uh, Dick must not believe in the deep inside angle that we have watched uh, I over the weeks. I was watching myself, Fred, watch them in practice. They don't seem to be as far to the left as, uh, as they should have been, and so I think the others might be a little tighter. There's the cover. Downey with a spare. Dick is six feet tall. He doesn't look that tall. Actually, Patterson is six feet, and Pat looks much taller. However, Dick only weighs 140 pounds, so he's giving about 60 pounds to his opponent. But as far as that bowling ball is concerned, they both weigh the same. They must, according to ABC rules and regulations. So it's a case of two arms and two legs and one head. They're even. One, one bowling ball, too high, the six pin. So Dick, beginning to try to fit them in, that's the phrase that the boys use. It seems when they throw that nose hit, they always say, well, he tried to fit it in, and the result is you're a little high. Where when you're freewheeling, I believe you agree, George, you do let the ball do. run a little. Yes, sir. Or you <coughs> belly. <laughs> if you're steering well on the bowling ball, you don't have much chance for it. Patterson moves in now with a chance for the first double. We've filled all the frames. Downey is 77 spare. Patterson now with a chance to take the lead on the strike. There's the inside angle. And Pat doesn't get there again and leaves the two pin again. Pat just a little careful. He left the two there in the third frame. Identical hit. So at the end of the first five, in the first game of three, it's going to be just one pin with Patterson out in front. So it's down here with 77 spare. Patterson, 78 spare. Too high, 4-9. Didn't look that high, did it, George? No, really? sir. But Freddie noticed you, the little thud. I think he lost that ball a little too close to the foul line and made it, the ball dig in a little too much on the head at the last second down there. 
In other words, if he'd have got the ball about a foot over the foul line, it would have had a foot less to roll and might have been in the pocket when it got down there instead yeah. of a little high. Very true, Fred, and I think you would have had a strike out of close. Four nine, hurry. Oh. Good try, Patterson opened the first open frame of the match, and that gives the youngster, Dick Downey, from Newark, New Jersey, a chance to get out in front. Good turn. No doubt about that. So Downey now with a big strike in the sixth against Patterson's open. He can turn this into a 20 pin advantage if he can come up with the next one. Five in a row worth $250. Every strike on top of the five in any one game worth $50 additional. $1,000 goes to the winner, 500 to the runner up. Both these men will make another appearance meeting a different opponent. Top score, top total for six games, our final. There it is. And Mr. Downey has now put himself some 20 pins out in front as Patterson moves in in the seventh. Careful. Broke it up, nothing but the six pin. We were mentioning that on television in Chicago, he has a 727 total. He shot a 299 game on Cleveland television, leaving the number five pin on his 12th ball. So this fellow is not afraid of cameras. In fact, he's not afraid of anything. I call him a tiger. And you can understand. He's a pretty big fellow. We used to check him in at 197 pounds. I have a hunch he weighs a little more than that now, doesn't he? I was talking to him before the match. He's up to about 202 now. 202. That's a good average. We're in the eighth. <laughs> Mr. Patterson, give a strike. <laughs> Dick Downing, now, the youngster from Newark, New Jersey, born in 1938 in Newark. Took part in an office league for three years. Starting in 1956, he averaged 162, next year 185, third year 200, and he's been a pretty good boy ever since. Look out, four pin. Donnie playing at least six to eight boards farther to the right, or outside, as we say, than Pat Patterson is here on the lane that we refer to as the right side, lane 38 at Emerson Lanes in Parkersburg, West Virginia. There's the cover. Our hosts here at the Emerson Lanes, Mark Nichols and Jim Chacona. Their manager, John Milanese, is our statistician. Here's Downey to the left on a spare. Hurry up. Solid 10. Oh, that was a good ball, George. Well, that was, you couldn't roll the ball any better, but that, that was that nemesis. Ten pen. It's always a good subject here with you fellas. Uh, you know, the pro bowler will tell you there's only one real tap, and that's the eight pin. Now, if that wasn't a tap, George, what was it? To me, uh, I don't call anything a tap. You lose a lot of good hits, and if you're going to call one a tap, you might as well call them all taps, Fred. There's the cover. Dick Downey showing us that uh, certainly championship bowling is not... Uh, caused any problems up till now. He's hit the pocket pretty well for his first appearance. He may be nervous, but it doesn't show outside, but no one knows what's going on inside. Here's Patterson for the double. Another 4-9. Boy, he moved that one. Yes, he did. Well, he's been short there the past two frames. He left the two pin both times, kicking out the kicking out the two four five actually. Nothing but the two, and I think Pat decided he was going to give this one a little extra. And now the 4-9. Come on. Great shot. Great shot by Pat Patterson, the 4-9. Well, he had a little practice on that shot. He left it on the left side in the sixth frame. Patterson now moving to the left. Dick Downey out in front by 20 pins. We go into the 10th frame. Neither boy able to get that five in a row for bonus money. There's the reach, and that might have been three in a row.
five pin up there. That's the king pin, actually. Many people think the head pin is called the king pin, the number one, but they, you have the triangle surrounding the five pin, which makes it the king. It's protected. There's the cover for 185. So Pat Patterson's 220 average for 18 games on championship bowling just uh, took a slide. And here's Dick Downey in the 10th. Four pin, just a bit tight. We've lost uh, half a dozen tight hits here already in the first yeah. game, George. Fred, Two, four, know, nine. Well, the old saying is liars can figure, but figures don't lie. But Patterson's score, he played that game much better than his score shows. I mean, it's just the way the breaks go in the game sometimes. Very it's strong, 185. At the four, covered. Downey with a count, 204. Dick spent a year in the National Bowling League in 1962, bowled with the Fresno Bombers, along with three of the boys that you see here on Championship Bowling, Ed Bourdais, Bill Bonetta, and Vern Downing. You get these two boys mixed up, Vern Downing and Dick Downey. There it is. Seven pin this time for 203. So at the end of the first game of three on Championship Bowling from Parkersburg, West Virginia, this is Fred Wolf along with George Howard. Two big games to follow. Anything's liable to happen. Don't go away. Here are the scores for the first game. Pat Patterson, 185. Dick Downey, 203. The margin, 18 pins. I just want to remind the two bowlers that we do have the $250 bonus for five strikes in a row. You fellas were told that before the show? Were you? you? You know about it. Well, how about it, Parkersburg? You ready for the second game? <laughs> Pat Patterson from St. Louis. The margin, 18 pins. Downey out in front. Patterson throws too tight. Got four pin again. Well, we've been looking at the four, the four nine here. The boys. Uh, Getting him in just a bit too tight. Patterson in the first game, run into the 4-9 in the sixth frame. He missed it. He left it again in the ninth and converted it, unable to get the double throughout the game. Three strikes for 185 at the four-pin <laughs> Downey caught a double in the sixth and seventh frames, then left a four-pin in the eighth, a 10-pin in the ninth, and a four-pin in the tenth. Both games much stronger than they indicate. 203 and 185. Dick Downey, the youngster from Newark, New Jersey. This time the seven pin solid. And I don't think Richard Alexander knew exactly what happened with that one, George. How do you? Uh, we've we've left the seven on shakers. There's one solid. That that hit is always caused from a ball that's a little tight in the pocket, Fred, and as it bangs up against the sideboards, it makes it jump over the seven. Uh, you can tell it, it's always on a real tight pocket hit. Well, Downey with a spare. Both boys uh, coming up with pretty good hits here in the first frame. The seven pin and the four pin. Haven't had too many ten pins. It's been the four or the seven or the four nine. As Downey moves to the left. Dick won the Eastern Regional Professional Bowlers Association title in New Jersey in 1963. There's a solid 10. Speak of the and devil, there it is. Just mentioned it. We shouldn't talk about these things, I guess. Well, Donnie's thrown two beautiful balls here and is still is looking for his first strike. There's the cover, nice shot. So Patterson uh, stepping in now on the right, still trailing by 18 pins. Pat has rolled 10 sanctioned perfect scores. And that's quite an accomplishment. Hurry up, Pat. Well, he didn't get there. He has the two pin again with company, the two five. 
seemed to be rushing the foul line just a little bit on that shot, Fred, that he missed the turn on the ball. That took just a little bit ahead of it. When you're playing a lane as deep as Pat is playing the right side here, uh, rushing the line can be very bad, can it? Yes, it can. Be. You have a tendency of getting that ball behind you and throwing it out too far. You, you or sell just it the opposite. The right, or you miss the lift, and if you do get it there, you pull it back into the nose. So when you're playing that far inside, you've got to be very sharp. Patterson moving left. Downey out in front here in the second game of three on championship bowling. Television's number one bowling show from Parkersburg, West Virginia. There's Patterson's first strike here in the second game. Downey moves in on the right. This young fellow finished 16th, the Metropolitan New York's Bowler of the Year in 1960. There we go. Well, I guess we got to loosen them up a bit. Looks like the thin hit is the best hit here this week, George. Starting to pay off, I believe, right now, Fred. I think the boys are getting a little wise to this now. They're going to start letting the ball float out a little bit more. Well, that's cutting the line pretty thin, isn't it? When you say, I'm going to try for the thin one, I'm going to forget oh. about the solid hit. I th <laughs> All right, for the double, down he throws. Too tight, too tight to 4 7. Well, he let that one go up there again. Help support Radio Free Europe's truth broadcasting into the Iron Curtain countries. Send your truth dollars to Radio Free Europe Fund, Post Office Box 1963, Mount Vernon 10, New York. The 4 and the 7 he has to spare. And now. Pat Patterson has the opportunity to move in here in his two turns on the lanes and actually take the lead with two strikes. He trails by 19 pins. He is on a strike in the third. Downey has a spare in the fourth. This strike would give Pat that chance, and he's too high and lucky enough to break up the 4-6, leaves nothing but the 6 pin. Pat knew that one was uh, thrown in the wrong place the minute he let loose of it. Yes, Fred. I watched Patterson's head that time as he went into the foul. You know, one of the biggest foul of a lot of bowlers, which it's hard, it's easier said back here and see, is that I think he took his eye off his target as he threw that, which made him pull the ball off way off line. There's the cover. It's amazing, too, uh, George, when they shoot at a one-pin spare, for instance, uh, Patterson there, that's just so nice and easy, very rhythmic, no problems. Rhythm and grace, as they say. Yeah, that's for sure. But when you're throwing the ball at all ten, you can get yourself tangled up pretty easily. You think you got to put a little extra into it to knock all ten of them over. Seven pin, almost a five-seven. Pat kicked the five out of there. Patterson was one of the most traveled bowlers in the world, I'm sure, in 1959, he traveled over, well over 100,000 miles for AMF. He's one of their very popular staff members. Made quite a trip. There's the cover. He visited Japan, Korea, Okinawa, Hawaii, and Alaska. Downey moves in in the fifth. He's on a spare. He's got to hurry, hurry. He doesn't get there, the two, four, five. That would have been a good line for Patterson, but Downey's ball does not move as much as Pat's, and uh, it just stayed out there. The 245, this is one of the 1,023 possible spare leaves. Way left. Well, he's not going to pick it from out there. That's a pretty good angle, but it's a little dangerous, too. At the end of five, Downey 76 spare, Patterson 77 spare. Too high, 3-6 in the sixth for Dick Downey. Well, we've only had one double in this match, and we're halfway. Both boys have had one chance at a double here this game. Both have missed. There's the spare. So Patrick Patterson will move in here. Bruce of the ABC Public Relations Department has had quite a talk with me on his first name. I used to call, I say Patrick, which in my way is a nickname. His name is Claude. 
They call him, of course, the smiling Irishman. Pretty fair golfer, too, by the way. Had the pleasure of playing with Pat many times. He can fool you. At the two pin, the cover. So we go into the seventh frame in what looks like to be a spare shooting exhibition here, George. Where are the strikes? Boy, I'm telling you, we're sure missing them, Fred. Uh, but the boys are fishing a little bit. They've been close, so they're trying different angles right now. So let's hope that they get started pretty soon here. Patterson on the left. That could be something. Nothing but the 10 pin. Patterson was the runner-up to Bobby Kowalik in the championship bowling series in Northbrook, Illinois, and what a job he did. Average 220 for 18 games, had a 747 and a 730. Two single games of 287 and 289. Crowding again leaves the 6'10 Patterson with a three pin advantage now. In this, the second game, he lost the first game by 18 pins. It's a close match, however. The strikes seem to be very scarce at the moment. Cross lane, 6'10, the ball between the two pins. And that's about what the young fella turns in. Very nice shot. You know, one great advantage of bowling is that the whole family can participate. Fathers can bowl with their sons in father-son leagues, mother with daughter, junior leagues, phantom leagues, office leagues. There's room for everybody at your nearby neighborhood bowling establishment. Why don't you take the whole family? Mother, bowl in the morning, in the afternoon. Hurry up, Richard. Oh, he got there. Uh, George, uh, I, I'd like a little comment on that shot. Now, it seemed as though he, he was uh, actually ahead of himself, a sort of a desperation move there at the foul line. Well, that's what we call a fanny farmer. He got there and he fanned the ball, his arm and hand back, just to get the ball part of the head pin. Well, he sure got away with one. Here comes Patterson. He doesn't get there again, and he has the two pin again, but he has the seven with it. The two seven. Pat has been short on the right side about six or seven times here in these first two games. Of course, he's been high, too. He can't seem to find that line with that deep inside angle. This ball doesn't come back enough. The two and the seven, the ball between the two, pins a nice shot. All the bowlers on championship bowling wear the King Louie matched shirt trouser set. These are bright yellow, incidentally, if we were in color, you could get a good idea. Fine thing to wear, you feel very relaxed and free. Patterson finally gets one. And he looks at his watch, as most of the boys do. This seems to be a standard uh, little gesture. If you're having trouble getting strikes when you do get one, you just look at your watch. Here's Downey now on a strike, still room for five in a row and a chance to get out in front with this one, the big turn, hooray! He doesn't get there, the two, four, five, eight, the bucket, and the exclusive AMF spare maker will indicate the ball between the two and the five, but you better get enough of the two so you can get the eight pin. There it is. Now, Dick, uh, playing that 2-8 uh, from the extreme left, this has got to be uh, a head-on shot, doesn't it, George? That ball wouldn't have a chance to come back if he threw it out. Actually, Fred, he plays it that way, right straight at the two-pin, so the ball, he knows the ball is not going to hook any there, so he throws it right straight at the two-pin. We're in the 10th. <coughs> There's the strike. So Dick Downey, the youngster from Newark, New Jersey, has not had an open frame. He has had one double in the first game, no doubles this game. He still has a chance for the double here in the 10th. That was his third strike, and this the second game. He had three strikes the first game. Patterson had three strikes the first game. 
Too high, no double, leaves the sixth pin. He'll settle for 192 with this cover, making his first appearance on championship bowling. This youngster likes to play golf, shoots in the low 80s, and has become quite a water skiing fan since uh, spending some time in Fresno, California. 192, without an open frame, two games, one double. Pat can go all the way for 213, would give him a three pin lead if he can get three strikes. How about that? There's the big smile. We haven't seen the Irishman smile very much here this week, and he hasn't had too much reason to smile. That's his first double, and if he gets this one, he can take the lead. Both boys filling all 20 frames this game. As a matter of fact, we've only had one open frame. Good turn. One more. And that gives Patterson the lead. Pat has trailed all the way. Finally takes the lead here in the 10th frame of the second game. A chance for four in a row. He'll be one short of bonus money. 213. Can win this game by 21 pins. He trailed by 18. He can take the lead by three pins with a full count. And that just could be. Well, he leaves the 10 pin. So Patterson out in front by a couple of pins. One big game to go. A very close match here on championship bowling from the Emerson Lanes in Parkersburg, West Virginia. Patterson 212, Downey 192. This is Fred Wolf along with George Howard. We'll be back for the big one in just a moment. Here are the scores at the end of two games. Dick Downey, 203 and 192 for a total of 395. For Pat Patterson, a big finish in the second game, 185 and then 212 for 397. The margin, two pins with one game to go. How about it, Parkersburg? A little encouragement here now. And boom! Dick Downey, the youngster from Newark, New Jersey, now trailing by two pins at the end of two games, 397 to 395. $1,000 here hangs in the balance. It looks like a close one. First frame. Downey ready. It looks like he'll be there. There's the strike. Well, we waited, uh, we waited three frames in the second game for the first strike. Looks like we're off in a hurry here. Patterson finishing here on the right side in the second game with a double on top of one in the ninth could be about ready to explode. He's overdue. The smiling Irishman from St. Louis reaches strong. He carries all but the seven pin on a very good hit. Pat Patterson. He was the winner of the National Bowlers Journal Classic in Seattle, Washington back in 1954. Mort Luby's great event that uh, is run in conjunction with the ABC tournament every year. At the seven pin, the cover by Patterson. <laughs> Patterson's been uh, a great runner-up champion, much like Billy Waylou. In years past, he was the runner-up in the PBA tournament at Paramus, New Jersey. He was beaten by the left-hander, Roy Lowen, in the finals in 1961. We happen to uh, have the honor of doing the commentary on that one. There's the two and the four. Very unusual lead, wouldn't you say, George? Yes, Fred, it's Don't actually a two-four lead, two-four-five lead, but the pin kicked off the wall and took the five out. Makes the spare a little bit easier when the five gets out of there. The two and the four. Patterson counting 18. Downey needs a spare. The match will be tied to the pin. <laughs> So Dick Downey making his first appearance here at the Emerson Lanes in Parkersburg, West Virginia on championship bowling. The number one bowling show on television. He watched this show many years from many different parts of the country. He'll never double from there. The two and the five. Dick Downey giving that one a little extra room it never came back. So the youngster now with a cover here will have 20 in the first frame on a spare. Patterson is 18 on a spare. 
Patterson had a two-pin advantage. Eight frames to go. The match is even to the pin. So Downey now moves to the left side. And talking to Downey, he admitted to the fact that the 2-5 is his toughest spare. He plays uh, very much to the left, actually throws very little hook, rolls the ball into the pins rather than trying to go around. In the third, there's a good one. Well, Downey having uh, what little success he is having in the strike department, most of them are on the left side. He's having his trouble on the right. Patterson is having his most success on the right, having trouble on the left. Big Pat now in the third needs the strike to keep it back. Leaves a solid 10 and Downey is now out in front by one pin. Oh, that was in up to the shoulder, wasn't it? Well, he put that ball right where he wanted it, Freddie. He lit the stay ahead. Careful, Pat. Whoop. Patterson covering the spare. Pat was captain of the American Bowling Congress Classic Team Champions in 1962, winning the title in Des Moines, Iowa. Wearing the bowling glove, which he represented in that tournament. Hurry up. Another solid 10. You can't hit him any better than that. So Patterson could be on a double. Downey is sitting on a strike. The youngster has taken a two-pin lead now, and he has a chance, of course, to add to that if he can come up with a couple of strikes in his next turn on the lanes. Cross lane, 10 pin. Little extra speed. Right at the pin, the cover. So we'll have a chance here to see whether Mr. Downey is an opportunist or not. That's better. That's better. Well, he did make a change. He moved uh, deeper than he has the double now, beginning to pull away from his veteran opponent, Pat Patterson. We're in the fifth. On two, he throws. He's there. That's number three. So Downey's been doing very well over on the left side. He had a strike there in the eighth and tenth of the second game. He had has had strikes now in the first, third, and fifth. We're almost halfway in the third and final game. Patterson throws it out. Too far, nothing but the five pin this time. He had the two, four, five, kicked the rest out of there. It's a nine pin count for Patterson. So this will be Patterson's fifth straight spare in the third and final game, the first five, all conversions. So at the end of five, young Dick Downey is 40, working on a triple. Patterson is 75 in the fourth, with a spare in the fifth. Well, he picked one out of there, the four seven. Four seven up there, but Pat got a nice kick and got his strike. Well, he has four frames to go. He still has chance for the bonus money, and he may need a few strikes in here, unless Mr. Downey keeps going. Dick is working on three. We're in the sixth frame. Dick needs this one. This will be his big one. He's bowling very well on the left side. Let's see if he stays inside again, holding the tight line. He's inside, all right, but he's too high. Four, six, and Mr. Patterson is suddenly right back in this match. Well, now, he stayed on the inside line, but he uh, he just didn't give it any room at Fred, all. Fred, that's the bad thing, of the tough thing about playing this inside tight line. You've got to be very careful with the ball. Taking the one, Downey is open. That's his first open frame of the match. And the triple was his first triple. So he's 126 in the sixth. Patterson will need one strike to take the lead back. The margin will be one pin if Patterson can strike in the seventh, as Downey is high, leaving the four seven. 
in the seventh. According to a, an AMF study of a year or two ago about what pins stand the most times, what are the most popular spare leaves, and it seems as though we're having a spare match here this week, using a typical 150 average bowler, of course that don't uh, fall into the category of these boys, but the 10 pin was the pin that stood the most times. Too high, four or six, Patterson gives it right back. This was a three week study of a 150 average mixed league. And in three weeks, the 10 pin stood 333 times. There's the cover. There were 238 different spares. And the seven pin was the second most common leave, just one behind 332. The five pin was 315 times. And the one, two, four missing the head pin, 309 times. Thought that might be interesting. We're in the eighth. Patterson right back. So Patterson now, 123 in the seventh, a strike in the eighth, Downey out in front with two frames to go. Two for Patterson, three for Downey. In the eighth, too far out. Gets there, got a piece of it. That's about the same ball that he threw in the sixth. The only difference being, George, he gave that one a little room to work. That's right, he gave it a chance. I call it trust. He trusted his ball that time. I guess a lot of the boys say when you keep hitting your nose that you just uh, have no courage, or I believe they use the other phrase, or no intestinal, intestinal fortitude. fortitude. Yeah. There's a shorter word that yes, there is, is there, which we will not drop in at this time. We're in the ninth, Downey on a strike. Too high, look at that one, and Pat Patterson can pull this one out. Well, we haven't seen this one before. This is the big four, with the exception that we have the nine pin up there instead of the 10. Now, the AMF magic triangle pin indicator indicates the four, six, seven, nine. Downey is going to try it from the left side. Actually, this spare could be made from either side. The spare maker says between the four and the seven. And he got too much of the four and he is open. How would you have shot that one, George? Would you have Fred, shot I think the six I'll, No, it, well, it all depends on the count. Uh, it's a lot easier to make the six and the nine than it is the four, seven. But I, actually, I think he could have made it with the four, seven. We're in the ninth. Patterson on a strike. For $1,000, he gets the double. Well, Downey had a 21-pin lead. He was on a strike, counting 18 and 8, which cut him down to 172. Patterson, on a strike, picked up at least 24 pins with that ball. And let's see what he can do in the 10th. He still has room for five in a row. Patterson now out in front by less than 10 pins. 10 pins stops him. Patterson led by two pins going into this, the final game. It's a close one. And John Milanese, our statistician, the manager here at the Emerson Lanes, trying to keep it straight. It looks like this game will be tied in the ninth. That's it. Give Patterson 172 in the ninth and a spare in the tenth. The two pins that Patterson is working on certainly are very important. If Patterson gets nine pins on this ball, he'll have 191. He had a two pin advantage, which would give him 193, meaning that Downey will have to double to win if Patterson gets nine. If he gets eight, Downey can tie him. All right, he's got 10. Well, that makes it pretty tough for the youngster. Dick Downey now for $1,000 needs two strikes. A strike and a spare. A spare and a strike will give him 192. That would be a tie for the third game, but Patterson has those two big pins. And that big four, six, seven, nine in the ninth frame certainly could be the difference unless Dick can come up with two strikes. He throws for one. Throws, two, five. Leaves the four. Man, he got a great action down there. So the winner's got to be Pat Patterson, the margin cannot be any less than two pins. You almost got a nice lucky break on that one, Fred. 
Yeah, that pin went flying right across the deck. So Dick gets the fourth pin, a little disheartened with what happened in the ninth. And Patterson, being the great uh, clutcher that he is, came through with a $1,000 strike for the double in the ninth for 192. Downey now with a spare. The count here will give him 192. <laughs> there it is. And that's the difference. Patterson had a two-pin advantage going into the third game. It's a dead heat in the third. 192 apiece. A great match, a close one. A great exhibition of spare shooting. This is Fred Wolf. Thanks to George Howard for sitting in. We'll have a word or two with these two fine bowling champions in just one moment. Here are the final results. Dick Downey, 203, 192, and 192. The total is 587. For Pat Patterson, 185, 212, another 192. The total, 589. It's official. The winner, Pat Patterson, by just two pins. A thriller. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Well, Dick. As the runner-up share, $500. Your first appearance on championship bowling, well, let's say not a record breaker. You were pretty close, two pins. The thing is that uh, we were supposed to shoot 690 instead of 590, but it didn't work out that way. Oh, but you, we wanted to keep it close. You wanted to keep it close. You got the first uh, figure there a little mixed up. You'd rather right, have, you would rather have lost with 687, I'm sure. That's right. Well, I'm going to show you the difference, Dick. You're new, new in the game as a professional bowler. You're a youngster. You have a great future. I'm sure out in front of you, here's a fella that I'm sure doesn't care whether he shoots 489 as long as you had 487. <laughs> well, I don't think that, that's not true, Fred. I'm just kidding you, Pat, really. There's $1,000, so that's getting away pretty cheap, 589. That is. To be a winner. I'm very satisfied with it. I'd much rather get 1000 for 589 than 500. You would. Now, just give me a general idea. I know you can bowl much better than that. We're expecting bigger things from both of you on your second appearance here. Would you make any, what changes are you going to make the next time? I'm not going to make too uh, drastic a change. I'm just going to try to get more strikes. You're going to try to get more yeah. strikes. Neither of you were close to the bonus. And uh, Dick, I want to hear, I want to see big things from you on your next appearance. Okay, sure. Parkersburg is expecting it, aren't you? All right, good luck to you. Good luck to you. Take it easy. We'll be right back with a championship bowling tip. Now for our championship bowling tip this week, we've asked uh, Pat Patterson to come back. And Pat, uh, suppose we talk a little bit about uh, approach, number of steps. What do you recommend? Well, Fred, uh, we recommend all the professional bowlers, although we don't all take four steps, we recommend the four-step approach. Four-step approach. Yes. If you take five, that's fine. We wouldn't change you. But anyone taking three steps who isn't satisfied with their bowling, they should change to four. Would you advise some bowlers who aren't satisfied with their bowling who take five to change to four? Uh, I believe so, yes, because uh, with four steps, everything starts at the same time. You push the ball away on that first step. If you're taking three, you have to push the ball away before you take your first step, and it's a little bit hard to keep proper timing that way. In other words, you feel there's less chance of rushing the line with a four-step approach against the five? Well, I wouldn't say there's less chance of rushing the line. It's very important to go up slow, but uh, you're going to have the ball in coordination with your feet if you take the four-step approach much more so than you will with the Would five or three. Would you like to demonstrate oh, I'd that? Be glad your to, bowling Fred. ball with the four steps. Pat Patterson, who recommends the four-step approach, as most of the boys do. You want to go this way? We'll go this way. Now, just I don't want you to... Uh, I won't trip you, Pat. Now, if you'll take it easy, I would like to sort of just go along with your four steps. Now, the ball is in position. First step, out on one. Second step, down on two. Back, four steps, stride, follow through. It's that simple. That simple. Let's not... Let's I haven't changed a thing. <laughs> haven't changed a thing. It's that simple, four steps. Now, it's uh, repeat that. Step one, step two, step three, step well, four. Well, the ball, the ball is out in front of you on one. Push out away on one. one. It's down at your side on two. The left foot's forward. The ball is down at the side. The right foot is forward. The ball is at the top of the backswing on the third step. And then on your fourth step, which is actually a slide, you should bend that knee and slide, and you roll the ball out over the foul line. Thank you very, very much. Pat Patterson. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. We'll repeat the scores. Pat Patterson, the winner, over Dick Downey, 589 to 587. Sure hope you can join us again next week when Championship Bowling, television's number one bowling show with over $75,000 in prizes, will originate here from the Emerson Lanes in Parkersburg, West Virginia. In the meantime, just keep them bowling out there.
matching shirts and slacks used on championship bowling by King Louie. Championship Bowling is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress, and we wish to thank AMF for their cooperation in helping us to produce Championship Bowling.